Hello everyone, you are on Around the Wickets on the Papare.com. As you know, Sri Lanka is on the verge, I should say on the verge, it's, I'm not sure whether it will happen, but there's a good chance of Sri Lanka whitewashing or brownwashing the Australians come the third test at the SSC. Now, Sri Lanka won the first test. Uh, coming from behind, they beat Australia after conceding a first innings lead. But then what about Gaul? I thought it was a completely uh, comprehensive and a very good win by Sri Lanka as they outplayed the Australians in every part, every aspect of the game. Now, Angelo Matthews did a good thing. He won an important toss. And, uh, well, 280 plus wasn't a big score that Sri Lanka was expecting because at goal, as we know, the average is around 360 batting first. But I thought it was a kind of a teasing, challenging score. And the way the Australians succumbed, now that's the concern, I'm sure, for the Australians. And that's obviously a worry. Now, that has made Darren Lehman not criticize, but suggest that the Australians should re-look at the pitchers that they used to have in Australia, particularly for their domestic game. Now, as we know, Brisbane, Perth, Melbourne, Sydney, Adelaide, they offer different options. If you're playing first-class cricket, there they used to at least. But now with the drop-in pitchers, I believe it's a, it has become far more predictable and, and far more batsman-friendly. And batsmen seem to struggle as soon as they are up against something foreign. So, goal was completely foreign to the Australians. And I was extremely impressed with the way Dilruan Pereira uh, really stepped up. I believe that Dilruan Pereira should be a permanent feature in this Sri Lankan side wherever Sri Lanka tours. Now, I, uh, when I say wherever, I mean England and Australia as well. Because Dilruan Pereira is an old-fashioned off-spinner who can deceive the batsman with flight, can hit the pad, can he have a few LBWs going for him, can surprise the batsman. And the way he bowled at goal, the first thing he did was he slowed down his pace. We did speak about the way he bowled in uh, Palikale. He was firing the ball in, he was not looping it, but goal, it was ideal. I, I believe he understood, he summed up the pitch very well. He started bowling slowly or slower and he was averaging about 81, 82, 83 kilometers an hour. Now, he, he gave a lot of credit to Pial Vijay Tunga, the, the spin bowling coach who, who was uh, made to join the side uh, from, uh, say, fourth or fifth day. Uh, at Palikale and then Pial Vijay Tunga did work with uh, Dilruan Pereira who got, got into that nice groove, nice rhythm and the way he started bowling really started baffling the Aussies and also the way he batted. I, I, that's another thing that we haven't seen of Dilruan Pereira. Now, I wonder whether you know that Dilruan Pereira has played first-class cricket as a top all-rounder, a batsman uh, who, who bats in the top six. He also opened for Sri Lanka in a limited over game, so he can bat. So, it's a case of he contributing, batting at number eight. And I thought his bowling really rubbed off on the on his batting. He got a half century, got a 90 when he made his debut, but then a string of low scores and uh, the Sri Lankan tail virtually started with him. Rangan Herat came in always and did play a few shots, but then Sri Lanka needed someone solid, like the way Dilruan batted. Just be a bit aggressive whenever it's needed and also accumulate the runs. And I thought 50 runs and 10 wickets, the first ever Sri Lankan to do that, the fastest to get to 50 wickets in Test cricket, all that will hold Dilruan Pereira in very, very good stead. Now, I think we need to also talk about Rangan Herat's hat trick. Rangan Herat continues, just continues to get better. They say spinners mature like an old wine, and that's exactly what Rangan Herat is doing. He's just getting better, he's baffling the Australians, he just seemed to be. In confusing them with his flight, with his spin, with his loop, his variations. And that hat-trick really, really was the final nail in that Australian coffin. They just didn't know what to do. And the way he just skimmed through, got through that Australian batting really was the factor. But what about the batting for Sri Lanka? Now, we've been impressed with Kusal Mendes. He continues to score runs, seemed to be the golden boy at the moment of Sri Lanka cricket. And then Kusal Pereira... Impressed. Started at number 7, then went to number 6, now at number 3. Now, he's been moved up and down. He's not been given a permanent place. Let's hope that the selectors will persist with him if he fails. But I get the feeling that Kusal Pereira, if he's not keeping wickets, he should be batting up the order. I, I believe he's a waste of time batting down the order because he's a, he's a destructive batsman. He can take on the bowling and he can also destroy good bowling. And he, he can be that demoralizing factor going into any game, be it a test match, a 50 over or a T20 game. 
Right, so Sri Lanka now will go into the SSC game, hopefully looking to whitewash the Australians. Now, they, the last time they beat Australia was in 1999. Now, that was under Sanat Jayasuriya. I wonder whether it's a coincidence that Jayasuriya is the chairman of the electors now. So, Jayasuriya has had a hand in both series win. And also, since the Murli Vaughan trophy was introduced in 2007, this is the first time that the Sri Lankans have beaten Australia in a test series. Now, they got a brilliant chance of whitewashing them, winning the series 3-0 and also makes the ICC ranking a bit of a farce because Australia, number one, they got the maze and they've been beaten by a number seven side. I don't want to dwell on that, but I always believe that at present we don't have champion teams. We have good teams, but I, I wonder whether they can ever be called champion teams. But that's that's another subject. We wouldn't talk about it. But going into the SEC game, what options does Sri Lanka have and what do you think they'll try to do? One of the biggest worries that the Sri Lankans have seen is the fact that the openers haven't really come to the party. Kausal, uh, Kusal or Kausal Silva should I say. Kusal Mendy seem to be a name that keeps coming up, so we keep calling everybody Kusal. But Kausal Silva, man of the series in England, hasn't had a good run. And Dimut Karnaratna, what's gone wrong with him? I mean, he's someone that the Sri Lankan selectors thought is, is the permanent solution to their opening problem. Now, Dimut and uh, Kausal Silva, they have both failed. Now, the Sri Lankans have a few options. One option could be back the openers for another game, but I wonder whether that will be the way to go because you've got a very talented middle order batsman averaging over 50 in Roche and Silva in first class cricket, that is, uh, who's sitting on the bench and who deserves a break. So I believe that the Sri Lankan selectors will be looking at at least replacing one opener. Bringing in maybe Kusal Pereira to open, Kusal Janit Pereira that is to open and then bring in Roche and Silva into the middle order with Kusal Mendis batting at three. That's an option I believe the Sri Lankans will look at because they haven't brought in anybody else from outside into this squad. Now also a question about the fast bowling berth. I, I wonder whether Vishwa Fernando will uh, continue. It was more like a... Uh, just just a stopgap arrangement for Sri Lanka with Nuan Pradeep injured and also Suranga Lakmal not fit. So now we've heard that Suranga Lakmal is fit. We are still not sure about uh, Nuan Pradeep's fitness. So it's very likely if Lakmal's fit that the Sri Lankans will go in for that experience of Suranga Lakmal with the three spinners. Now, Sadhakan, we didn't even talk about him because he did nothing in goal. That's how much the Sri Lankan spinners, Dilran Pereira and Rangana Herat, dominated the Australian. So, Sri Lanka can uh, really look forward to this third test match starting on Saturday uh, against Australia and it's going to be a big game for Sri Lanka. As I said, huge opportunity to whitewash the Australians and win a series 3-0 for the first time against Australia. So, that's it on Around the Wickets on the Papare.com. But before you go, I think I must remind you that we got Cricketry, the audio analysis which we do at the end of each day's play in a test match. So, you could join us or you could uh, log on to the Papare.com, listen to uh, Cricketry and also join us again on Around the Wickets when, when we talk about the third test match. <laughs>